Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Is he dead, Bumper? Sure he's dead. The fall must have killed him. Get that common food away from here. Do we fry him, Bumper? No, we're going to broil him. Oh, fry him is better. No, I think we'd better broil him. Oh, boy, fry him. Now, let me do it my own way, will you? We broil him. We fry him. We broil him. We fry him. Suppose we don't find him. We've got to. You must get a picture of Mayor Hastings holding that goose. Yes, of course. Without that, the other pictures of no consequence to me. Drop that goose. Bumper! Well, if it isn't my old pal. Gentlemen, meet the mayor of Central Park. And it's a pleasure to shake the hands of the mayor of New York once more. You can get things ready. What are you doing so far away from New York, Your Honor? Hey, Corner, we always spend our season in Florida. Oh. And begging your pardon, sir. This is hardly the season for shooting. Oh, well, this is my duty to my loyal voters. <laughs> One goose for so many voters? <laughs> well, you see, Bumper, the voters don't care how often a public official takes a vacation or how long he stays, just as long as he keeps his picture in the papers holding a duck or a goose or a dead fish in his hand. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but the goose got slightly bald. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'll turn the other side to the voters. <laughs> Are you ready? All set, Your Honor. Yeah, excuse me, Bumper. This way, Your Honor. Oh. oh, there we are. Uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold it. Good, yes. Well, that's oh, just fine. a second, Your Honor. One more picture. Let me have that, will you? Thank you. Well, what's this about? Well, we didn't get a picture when you were made an honorary member of the tribe. Oh. All set. Hold it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fine. Now, I'll tell you. Get those pictures in the New York papers before I arrive there, won't yes, you? Yes, sir. And I'm going to cook this goose with, with bumper. You're not serious, are you? I'm never more serious in my life. <laughs> All right, boys. Come on. Well, who's the cook? I'm the chef. I'm his assistant. Oh, oh it looks as though my goose was cooked. <laughs> Here, Acorn. Take that goose out and clean it up pretty. Well, Bumper, when does your season in Florida end? You know me, Your Honor. When the birds fly south, I go with them. When the birds fly north, I follow them. Acorn and me are leaving for New York tonight. <laughs> You're a quaint fellow, and I like you, but you need reforming. Your Honor, how long have you known me? Ever since you stopped that brick that was addressed to me when I was making a speech down in Union Square about ten years ago, you probably saved my life. And for that, you want me to go to work, huh? Well, I want to do something for you. Back in New York, Your Honor, when you go to the casino for lunch, who is the first person you see? All right, Bumper, I'll play. Bumper is the first person I see when I go to the casino for lunch. Right. Then what happens? Well, I slip you a little money, 
thereby committing a great wrong by encouraging idleness in you. <laughs> and as long as you continue committing that wrong, it's all right with me. <laughs> you win, Bumper. I'm leaving tonight for New York. I'll see you Thursday. I'll be waiting for you. Can I give you a little transportation? Oh, please, Your Honor. Kind of sounds like I was hinting. Besides, I have my transportation. Are you sure? Hey, Corn. Are we sure? Yes, Mr. Mayor. We always get round trip tickets. But we'll take a couple of dollars to tip the porter. <laughs> Bumper, bumper, how far is we? 121 miles, maybe 22. From Central Park, 123. 126 miles from Lenox Avenue. Way up north, the sun will always shine. That lovely Hudson Tunnel is my Mason Dixon line. Here's a hitch for me and my son. We're approaching the metropolis, says gentlemen of renown. Sure, Bumper, we sure ain't going to town. I'll climb up that whole world and kiss every floor. The subway makes music to me with its raw. I'm dying to feel that I'm living once more. I gotta get back to New York. Telegraph for his honor, the mayor. Send a wire to Miss Marcher and meet me tomorrow at the casino at 1 o'clock. And cancel all my appointments for tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but you're scheduled to lay a cornerstone at 12. A cornerstone? Public school number 44, District 11. School 44, District 11. Must I lay it? I'm afraid so, sir. Well, all right, then. But be sure I make the casino by 1 o'clock. Very good, sir.
I guess those bums appreciate me steady. With hard work, acorns, and super ten careers of gentlemen of leisure without money. Who protects your apple stand when you've no license in your hand? My pal, Bumper. When you break the law or two, who can make the cup the roof? My pal, Bumper. Those birds sing better than ever today. They must have been practicing while I was away. Who can keep a businessman from vacations in the camp? My pal, Bumper. Who can keep the cops away when we kiddies want to play? My pal, Bumper. Hold up the mirror, son of Africana. In its reflection, I would see my panna. Wipe that toothache. I'm a snootiful. Bumper, you look beautiful. You certainly got sunburned in Florida. You look and you do. Yes, sir. Acorn, so do you. When you're hungry for a steak, who can't cure your belly ache? My pal Bumper. He can make me feel I'm full when he feeds me full of bull. My pal Bumper. His brand of coffee is a featurito. It's borrowed from the Central Park Casino. was a crime. I'm glad to be home, but I had a great time. What goes on down south in this man's nation? Panhandling, manhandling, inebriation, and repopulation. Though it's not a good country for a bum to get rich in, the South went from boast of an excellent kitchen over a banquet of fine roast goose. I had a conference with a mayor. I took the opportunity of discussing the citizens of our part, and he promised us all immunity. Scum. Yeah, bum. The pot is calling the kettle black. Don't you see that bumper's back? Welcome to your king. Does your majesty bring news of the plutocrats down south? Those rich, idle shirkers who live on us workers. Yeah, you work hard with your mouth. Yeah. That's just about enough of that radical stuff. If a man doesn't work, he ought to be dead. <laughs> Pardon me, egghead. You talk like a red. And I accuse you yeah? of wasting your time. Go on. While I slave away for the city. He slaves for the city. Your parasites all. Your brothers in crime. When the revolution comes, you won't sit pretty. Egghead, I demand an explanation. Well, it's up to you to prove I'm wrong. <laughs> Why the hesitation? Very well, then. I appoint myself attorney for the defense, and you're the prosecution. Ah, can that child stuff and pretense. We have a right to a fair trial by the Constitution. I'll call upon my first witness. Bumper? Yes, sir? What do you do? I love to breathe the air and to feel I'm free. I never have to care what becomes of me. I don't give a stitch if I never get rich. Not a soul I know ever owed me dough. When a bang goes fresh, I don't lose my cash. I find great enjoyment in unemployment. I'm the only man the world depression can overcome. In other words, gentlemen, hallelujah, I'm a bum. The workers will rule the world someday and all of your kind will be wiped away. Your socks and pants may have holes, but your plutocrats down your soul. Madam, Cossacks, Hoovers, Cossacks. Ah, what do I see? You shiver and tremble. 
people and you call yourselves free, your slave and white wife to the powers of cash. I'm proud as can be, but they can't frighten me. You'll die as you live, a useless slut. Parasites living off parasites. And what have you got? I like juggler. Fellow citizens, kindly scram. Don't let your principles make you forget that we were good friends and we're good friends yet. So remember, save the papers for me. All right. The Times in the morning and the Sun at night. Say, let me treat you to lunch today. Lunch with a plutocrat, what we eat anyway. Come to the casino. And now I must run. Acorn, let's go. We meet the mayor at once. shorter, make a couple of cuts. But, no but. Ah, oh, nuts. The mayor, the mayor, his honor, the mayor. Citizens of New York, I behold this dedication with true municipal pride and a feeling of elation. Though in order to be with you, I had to shorten my vacation. But I just had to take part. Yeah, he's breaking my heart. In the dedication of public school number 46 in district number 7. Public school number 44 and the district is 11. Oh, public school number 44 and the district is 11. I bury this with pleasure. Before any further mistakes can be made, I pronounce this cornerstone well and truly laid. Father reads the cop. Sorry, I can't stop. 
I brought them here, they're all of them here, the 50 Margaret Happy. All right, then bring the regiment in, but kindly make it snappy. You look so nice with baby on the daily news front page. Baby's only six months old. Yeah, he certainly acts his age. He's a great friend to the men of the municipal forces. James, the casino. And don't spare the horses. to me is touching. It does me so much good to see your honor. Pat, <laughs> hope I didn't keep you waiting. I had to have my picture taken with a baby. <laughs> so I see. Yeah. I'll see you same time tomorrow, Bubba. Thank you, your honor. Thank you, your honor. That's all my name. I'm sorry I was late. That's quite all right. I was laying a cornerstone. A cornerstone? Yes, public school number 44, and the district was 11. How interesting. Yes. Well, I laid it. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Same table? Yes, please. Lovely day, isn't it? Lovely. Papers say nice day tomorrow, too. I haven't seen the papers. Yes, well, there's not much in them. Not much. Must you always practice your profession? Can't you ever relax? Yes, sir. Oh. That's yesterday's menu. He says you get today is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Would you? Yes, certainly. Thank you. Uh, consomme and some brook trout and a mixed green salad. Have you seen any good shows lately? No. No, not lately. They say white bread is bad for you. You've got to listen to me. I, I can't stand it. Please, no emotion. But I've been going crazy. Please. What's that tune? I hate you. I don't mean to be rude. If, if you've got anything to say to me, I'll listen. I love you. You know I love you. That isn't the point. But it's so stupid of you to be jealous. He doesn't mean anything to me anymore, I swear it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. It's true. I gave him the money because... You don't love him and he doesn't mean anything to you. Yes, I understand that very. Because he was broke and wanted to leave town. I... I thought if he left, then you'd like it better. Oh, I see. I'd like it. Not you. Oh, you must believe me. I'd like to. He's gone. I'll never see him again. I never want to set my eyes on him. Really? Can't you believe me? I'm trying. Please, don't you love me anymore? If you hadn't wired me, I'd have come back anyway. I couldn't stand it. I haven't slept for four nights. I haven't slept since I left. I haven't eaten a thing. <laughs> I've been drinking like a fish. 
Oh, no, no, no soup. But you ordered it, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I wasn't myself. You don't want any soup, do you? No, no, I'm not hungry. No, well, just come back later on with something else. I'll gamble with you up for the serial number. All right. What is it, odd or even? Odd. You lose. Well, you cheated. Well, if you think so, I'll give you another chance. <laughs> odd or even? Even. You win. Oh, I, I can't take that. Why not? I'd have taken it if I'd won it. That means a fight over your left shoulder. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? <laughs> that means a trip to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Let's go to the races this afternoon, huh? Oh, I'd love to, but I'm awfully sorry I can't. Why not? You've got nothing to do. No, really, I can't. Not this afternoon. Well, all right. I'll call for you at eight. Sorry, I can't. You admit you had the bag when we left the casino. I brought you directly home. You say you haven't left the apartment all afternoon, and yet you claim you lost it. I'm afraid I must draw my own conclusion. And they are? That you gave the money to Len just as you did before. Hello, Egghead. You're just in time for coffee. Acorn, give Egghead a cup of coffee. Say, Egghead, before you settle down to chat, please get me the morning paper. You've got a varlet, haven't you? Your manners leave much to be desired. Still, one can't have everything. Egghead, you've been neglecting your work. This paper is two days old. Not even a copy of last night's sun. No system, no system. Keep on looking, it's there. Hey, what are you doing? If you'd have put aside the papers I asked you to. Hello. What's that? Uh-huh. Tick, 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 that's so empty. Not so quick. Tick, tick, tick. What's that thing? It's a lady's bag. The aristocratic rag of a plutocratic hag. Why the clock? So the lady you give it to won't give you a stand-up. People starving in the put clocks in bags. Come on, Bumper, look inside. What are you waiting for? It's from Cartier. Cartier? Our favorite jewelry store. The one we patronize. We? We? The Vanderbilt and me. Come on, let's see. Aha! Uh -huh. What is it? A dollar? Hey, brother, don't holler. One huh? thousand. A grand, that's a mint. One thousand, one thousand, must be a misprint. One thousand, one thousand, is there any reading in it? One thousand dollars. Let's sit down for a minute. It's counterfeit, but if it's good, one half is mine. One half is yours. Two, two divide. 
My blue blood reddened with jocularity. My noble heart is filled with thoughts of charity. But from the truth, you show a slight disparity. Slip me in you, I deign to say to you, three little words. Three little words? Three little words. Screw, Bob, screw. One half is mine, and don't you make a fuss. Bubba found it, it belongs to us. Where do you find it? In my bin, right here. Here, 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 here. here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, fair my noble ear. Dear June, I got to Cleveland okay this afternoon. The job looks good, and now I'm on my own. I'm grateful to you, June, dear, for the loan. I meant nothing to you, and yet you helped me, baby. I'll pay you back some time, and I don't mean maybe. Thanks again. Sincerely, Len. Miss June Marcher. 414 East 52nd Street, New York, and why it's hers. Sweet dreams of wealth. Good about. It belongs to us. It belongs to we. But surely you'll agree. One half belongs to me. I'll cut you down. Steady, steady. Hey, Pong, you're talking like a rich man already. I is rich. That's mine. I found half of it. What's the matter? The Adam Half is mine. Do you understand? It belongs to the lady. And I'm going to return it. Return it to a plutocrat? I'd rather have you burn it. Bump a pound of grand. Bump a pound of grand. A grand? A grand? I don't understand. A thousand dollars fell into his hand. Bump a pound of grand. Bump a pound of grand. We don't want money. Money is a curse. It's risky business and worse. I know a fellow who found some dough, he put it in a bank. The bank gave interest, dough began to grow. He got rich in a hurry, then he started in to worry. Worried because he was in dough and jumped right out of the window. Hide your found a grain. Put it on a horse, I've got a tip. A tip? No blonde, some horse, a pip. I don't want to bet you see in half of it belongs to me. How much is ten to one? I don't understand. Five little figures, just ten grand. Bump well, there you are. We win ten grand. And give the lady back a thousand just as you planned. What if Lovelorn loses and leaves us flat? If he loses, we ain't got it. What's wrong with that? Don't make me laugh. I want my half. Bump a pound of grand. Bump a pound of grand. Mm, man. A grand. A grand. A thousand dollars fell into his hand. Mm, man. Just one grand and friendship ends. No, Bumper. I is friend. Stop following us, all of you. It belongs to us to do. To Mr. Bumper and me. That through the whole community. I want my hat. <laughs> Everybody wants to share now. You know what we say with it. You can't get away with it. No giving back. 
just friends. We find a thousand dollars and friendship ends. If we divide the thousand, what each one gets is a joke. A little less than nothing. You're better off just for all. You got the grass. You got the trees. What do you want with money? You got the air. You got the breeze. What do you want with money? Look at the birds. Hear how they sing. They have no rent to pay in the spring. You own the world when you don't know nothing. What do you want with money? What do you want with gold? Frankie, you got your shine box. Then you got your fiddle. Hatefully, you got your principal. You're richer than Porter Fiddle. You know you can't take money. You know you hate the rich. Be consistent, Akehead. You stupid son of a witch. One of you is unhappy right now. What do you want with money? Check, Louise. I'm sorry to have to let you go, but I'm giving up the apartment. It's pretty tough to lose your job in times like these, Miss Marcher. Are you leaving right away? Yes, you can leave the key at the desk when you go. I'm not coming back. Will you send this up to 1264? Certainly, Miss Marcher. Right away, please. Front. 1264, right yes, away. Does Miss June Marcher live here? What does this say? Says Miss Marcher. Well, she doesn't live here. <laughs> no, I'll tell one. One what? You mean what one? All right, tell it. I want to see Miss Marcher. She's out. I'll wait. She's not coming back. I'll wait. You'll have to wait a long time. I'm in a hurry. Well. I am. So come in. You may as well be comfortable. Thanks. You read. Why? You may want to after you've tried everything else. Good morning, Your Honor. Yeah. Get me Miss March's apartment. Oh, Marcy, can I get out of bed for a minute? No, darling. No, dear, you must be a good little boy, or Santa Claus will not bring you a Wilson Mercerite guaranteed bobsled. Oh, nurse, catch Master Bobby. Come back, dear. Oh, now he's out of the room. Hello. Come back to bed, dear. You catch a death of cold running around, dropping snows Just, uh, just hold the wire a minute. Yes, sir. Hello, 
Hello, Your Honor. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for Miss Marcher to come home. Why? I found a pocketbook in the park and had a postcard in it with her address on it. Well, let me see it. No, no, the pocketbook. Let me see the pocketbook. Yeah, I got it someplace. Here it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on. Of all the abnormal idiots, Bumper. What a fool! What a jackass! Why, Your Honor, what did I do? Not you, Bumper, me. Bumper, you've made me the happiest man in the world. You know the lady? Oh, she lost it, just she said she did. Sure she did. Now, look, I'll leave it here with you, and when you see her, you give it back to her, huh? You'll leave nothing here. No, no. Take it and buy yourself a new park bench. No, no, I couldn't take Why it. Why not? My followers would resent it. You can't be a rich man in the park and keep your standing. Well, if you insist on being a socialist, split it up amongst your followers. <laughs> but where would I get change of a thousand dollar bill? Well, I'll telephone the cashier and arrange it right now. <laughs> When did Miss Marcher check out? Just before we sent her note up to use her. What's her forwarding address? She didn't leave any, Your Honor. Get me the police commissioner. Hello, Bob. This is John. Say, listen, Bob. June's disappeared. No idea, and I'm about crazy. Yes, give it the works. We'll hear everything right away. I'll wait at home. All right. Against the law to commit suicide? 
Even if you fail, you get six months. Your reason. Reason? Yeah, was it health? Money? Then it must have been love. Oh, lady. Don't tell me you were just taking a bath. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be fresh. I just want to find out why you did it, that's all. What? Jumped off the bridge. Did I? Don't you remember? Oh. Why did I jump off the bridge? I, I don't remember. God bless you. It's, it's those wet clothes. I'll build another fire outside, and you throw them out to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll dry them for you. Don't go away. But you've got to get undressed. Well, why do you have to go outside? I'll take that up with you later. And don't forget, when I come back, this is me. What went outside? Catch your death of cold. Come in here. Put this blanket around you. Comfortable? Tell me, what's your name? I don't know. You don't know your own name? I don't remember. Well, where do you live? Will you tell me that? Yes. Now we're going places. Where are we going? Well, we're not going anyplace yet. But you just said we were. No, you, you, you said you'd tell me where you lived, didn't you? Yes, and then you said we were going places. Oh. Stop kidding me and tell me where you live so I can take you home, will you? You said you would, didn't you? Yes. And will you? Yes. Where? I don't know. Listen, lady, one of us is goofy. You don't know your name, you don't know where you live, you try to drown yourself and you forget why. That stops me. Oh, don't leave me. I'm so afraid. I can't remember anything. I'm sorry, lady. I'm awful sorry. And I'm dumb, too. Say, did you ever hear of a thing called amnesia or aphasia? Well, I don't know which one it is, but you got one of them. What's that? Well, that means when your whole past has been wiped out, when you can't remember anything that's ever happened before. Oh, gee, don't cry. It ain't so bad. You go to sleep like a good little kid, and tomorrow morning everything will be all right. Oh, cut it out now. If you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you. That's a good little kid. And tomorrow morning, I'll call you for breakfast. Good night.
she thinks I'm the only man in the world. It'll be tough in the morning. When the competition begins. Sunday. Sunday, you seen Bumper? No, I ain't seen him. He's disappeared. And we're instituting a search for him. Uh, hop in, we'll find him. All right, we'll find him. <laughs> Hello, boys. Angel, I want to meet some of my friends. This is Egghead, Acorn, and Sunday. This is Angel. Would you like to go for a ride? Mm -hmm. I'd love to. Come on. How do you like her, boy? She dresses like a capitalist. What about it? Some of my best friends are capitalists. Sunday, will you take Angel around the park? First time, Egghead, a woman ever came between us. Hey, Bumper. Yeah? Who is she? I fished her out of the drink last night. She lost her memory. And I thought if we'd take her around the park, show her the different things, she might remember something. Oh. I don't want to remember anything. I just want to be with you. It's okay with me, Angel. And I'll see you get your wish, too. Uh, no trace of her. Well, never mind. No, I don't think anything's happened to her. I guess she just doesn't want to be found. Well, you can call the police off. Yes. Goodbye. Well, Angel, what do you think of our estate? It's simply beautiful. No, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's the merry-go-round. Would you like to take a ride? Mm -hmm, that'll be fun. Okay, Sunday. Whoa. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to give that girl everything I've got. You can't keep her in the park. A girl like that's got to have a room. Well, say, I can read the papers. There must be a lot of ads for rooms to let. Why don't you bring over to our house? We got a room. What do your wife say? <laughs> My wife's got the biggest heart in the world. Phyllis, you can't do this to me, Mr. Sunday. Your rent was due this morning. One four o'clock. He's always asked me to bring you over. Gee, that's wonderful. Come, Angel. We're on our way. Where? To your new home. I got you an apartment. I told Bumper that you'd be glad to let Angel have the room. She can have the room. See, I told you she had the heart as big as a house. 
The room will cost you nine dollars a week. But, Ma, I told Bumper that... that... You going to pay it? Oh, sweets. Couldn't you let him have it for less? Go and haggle. Mrs. Sunday, the figure is reasonable. Remember, I want my rent every Saturday morning, or somebody else will be living here Saturday afternoon. Oh, Bumper! Hello there. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you, Acorn. What are you doing here? Meeting you? What are you doing here? I'm here to meet the mayor. That sure have music to my ear. Fella says, Bumper's in love. Bumper's a ruined man. I said, no, Bumper come back. And here you is. That show sure am mellifluous. Maybe mellifluous, but it ain't true. You hear, ain't you? I know, but I ain't staying. Well, where's y'all going? Don't bother me now. I've got to see somebody. Big business, important business. You run ahead. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Bumper. Where have you been? <laughs> I was beginning to think you deserted me. No, oh, I've been <laughs> awful busy. What's the matter? I don't like to see that handshake like that. <laughs> I didn't know you were such a puritan. Oh, it isn't that, Your Honor. I don't mind a little fun within reason. But a man in your position, you you, you got to kind of watch your step. Yeah? For what? For why? For whom? No, Bumper, I've come to the conclusion that your philosophy is right. The philosophy of the sunbeams, the little breezes, of the lilies that grow in the fields. Come on in and have lunch with me. No, I'm sorry. I haven't got time. Time? <laughs> You've got nothing but. Not anymore. I've changed. I've seen the error of my ways. Bumper, have you met a good woman? Good as gold. And, Your Honor, the right kind of a girl to do wonders for you, too. Yeah, she has. Oh, I don't mean a Broadway dame. Well, this is the last straw. You make a disciple and you go ball and chain. The next thing, I suppose, you'll want to go to work. That's just what I want to see about. You remember that job you promised at the bank? Yeah. Could you fix it for me? I want to go to work right away. All right. <laughs> I hope you won't regret your sacrifice. No sacrifice working for this girl. It's a pleasure. <laughs> You've got it bad. You've been... Yeah, take it to Security Bank. Mr. Waring will fix you up. Thank you. Goodbye, Your Honor. Goodbye. Oh, Your Honor. Yes. Could you fix it for two? Is he in love also? No, but he'd be awful lonesome without me. <laughs> All right. There you are. Thanks. Goodbye, Your Honor. Goodbye. You can count on Acorn immediately in. Thanks. Goodbye. Acorn, we're going to go to work. Why? What for? We're going to become bankers, rich bankers. What for? Make money, get rich, live high. How much more high you want to live than we've been living? Oh, I can imagine living a whole lot higher. I can. How about with Jim? Jim, you got to work for ain't no good. Well, you're going to go to work and you're going to like it. I'll go to work, but I ain't going to like it. Work? <laughs> I say farewell to a beautiful youth. How about the boy? Will you tell them the truth? Bumper, we heard a rotten report. What do you mean, a report? The rumor is out that you're going to work. You must answer it short to the kangaroo court. All right, I'll answer and I'll make it short. Go on and form your kangaroo court. Let's sit down. For a judge, I call on a guy who's been tried for awesome theft and homicide. He's faced the juries in every state. A hundred judges read his face. Who else is better qualified to know what a judge should do? Then honest, forthright, conscientious, clean cut, stink foot blue. Order in the court. Twelve gentlemen will form the jury. For district attorney, I give you guys Legs McGurney. Skinhead Pete will read the charge. He's now appointed clerk on the case of the people of the park versus Bumper's going to work. One moment, Your Honor, before we start, I must have an attorney to take my part. To defend such a crime, 
takes a lawyer with guts. You think he can't get one? Your Honor is nuts. I'll defend him and end this silly fuss. He belongs to us workers, and not to you shirkers. When the revolution comes, he'll be with us. The charge! Bumper, you're on trial for deserting our cause. So you gave us our spirit, and you gave us our laws. If you're found guilty, this sentence we'll deal. We'll tell the world that Bumper is a road apple heel. Come on, Mug. You'll kindly take the stand. So nobody will believe you. Raise your right hand. You swear on the word of a good dental stiff that the bull you spill will be true? I do. Before causing this court any further expense, will you plead guilty to this repulsive offense? I object. His impertinence is really immense to call honest labor a social offense. But I do plead guilty. I did take the job. This court is shocked. I'd rather you'd rob. And his honor would, too. And he did, the fat slob. I committed a horrible crime, I'll admit. But I had a good reason. And this is it. There's no use stalling. I fall I'll conduct this case behind closed doors. Look, Your Honor, and please take note, there are two little fleas on Your Honor's coat. Just two little sweethearts, and we don't care whether those fleas are married or just fleeing together. The way of the world is a hinty. If your partner flees, then you must excuse me. I looked into her eyes and went the way of all men. I didn't want to do it, but I'd do it again. I knew a little look would be the finish of me. I didn't want to do it, but I did it, you see. Once I was wise, I took my freedom where I hung my hat Didn't surmise I could be dumb Till she gave me that I thought that if home sweet home Was just a prisoner's song But now I'd be so happy In the pen This good man Has gone wrong But I'd go and do it I guess. Bumper's right. And I move for acquittal. Ah, oh, don't cry, Bumper. I'm all right. Bumper, you're not guilty. The reason is quite plain. You're beyond our jurisdiction because you are insane. So goodbye, Bumper. And Acorn, too. This trial has been in vain. Goodbye, boys. I'll just say, I'll be the thing. We did four million dollars worth of sales. Four million. Four million. We incorporate for a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. Just sign your name on the bottom line. A hundred dollars is all I can do. Can't you make it two hundred dollars? No, just a hundred. Will you cash this check for five dollars? Nope. Is that a buck, Larry? No.
Oh, Bobo. Yes, Acorn. Uh -oh, did you hear me? Did I hear you? I didn't hear anything else but. Then tell me, did I say 153 or 154? That's your job, to remember things. You make me spoil more letters. I just can't seem to remember that counting. You'll never get on here without concentrating. Well, I'll count loud so you can hear me. Listen, Acorn, we've got to come to an understanding. We're friends, see, but we're in different departments. You see these letters? We expect to raise 14 million, 14 million with these letters. Just sending out them letters? But they've got to be stamped correctly, and I can't do you running in and out of your department interrupting me. All right, boys. But I've got to have an assistant. Never get anywhere. No concentration. One, two, three, four. Let's open them, huh? Sure enough. That's the only part of the job I like, Bumper is payday. Certainly feels good having money in your pocket. Yes, but you waste so much time getting it. I know, but it's nice getting it, though. What'll I do with it? Buy yourself a new suit of clothes, like me. You didn't buy them clothes. I've heard of the man give them to you for installment. Stop worrying, Acorn. Someday you're going to be glad you turned over a new leaf. Can't even see the sun no more. Ain't no windows in my department. Ah, it feels good in the park today, though. Let's buy some gin and treat the boys, eh? Can't, Acorn. Tomorrow's Sunday, we sleep all day. Can't, Acorn. First thing you know, they're gonna forget about you here and get a new head man. Can't, Acorn. Do you know history? What's history got to do with it? I heard about a man named Napoleon. He was ruined by a woman. Napoleon never knew Angel. Hello, Angel. You're 48 minutes later than yesterday. Am I? Yes, you are. Oh, they're lovely. Shall we watch him? Shall we go over there? I'd rather stay here with you. You are too beautiful, my dear, to be true. And I am too drunk with beauty. Drunk with the feeling that my arms that possessed you really caressed you too. You are too beautiful for one man alone, for one lucky fool to be with. When there are other men with eyes of their own to see with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one thing keeps worrying me. But there might have been someone else. Somebody before I came along. Oh, that's silly. Even if there was, he couldn't have meant half as much to me as you do now. Oh, it's nice of you to say that. But I wish it were true. Do you remember the first day when you took me on the merry-go-round? Would you like to go again? And you said that I should laugh? Uh-huh. Oh, I've had so much fun. Have you? Well, that's nothing what you're going to have from now on. I'm not a tramp anymore. I'm just beginning at the bank, see? But you wait till I get the hang of things. I'm going to get promoted. Then I'm going to get promoted again. And then when I'm promoted enough, 
I'm going to open up a bank of my own, with my own name on it. I'm going to have an office with a desk and nothing on it. I'm going to have a high silk hat, a flower from my buttonhole, a pair of striped pants, and one of those cutaway coats. You know, it may look funny, but I'm going to have one. You won't want to know me, then. I won't want to know you. Love cannot stand sharing. Not if one cares. You won't be comparing my every kiss with air. You know I care, and I'll be faithful and true. Not through a sense of duty. You are too beautiful, and I am too drunk with you. It's your friend, the mayor. I picked him up in the park, and he asked for you just before he passed out. Gee, that's serious. Why'd you take him home? I don't know where he lives. And I didn't take him to the city hall, because it might cause some talk. Nobody must see him in that condition. I'll just say goodbye to Angel. Oh, Angel. Give her my love. Angel. Yes? I gotta go away for a little while. Oh, no, please don't. Just a little while. And when I come back, if you're asleep, I'll call for you in the morning and I'll take you to Coney Island. Where are you going? The boss wants me. I hate you to go. Oh, honey, I hate to go. Well, I won't be sleepy, so come back, huh? All right, Angel. Goodbye, Bumper. Goodbye, Angel. Certainly not a hard man to get home, Your Honor, when you don't want to go home. There's no place like home, Bumper. There's no place so lonely. And why is it lonely? Tell me that. Why is it lonely? Well, I suppose it's lonely because no, it... No, that isn't the reason at all. It's lonely... Because of that woman, that's why it's lonely. That's why I'm lonely. That's why you're lonely. That's why the whole world is lonely. It's because of her. When I'm sober, I can't forget her. And so I drink. And when I drink, I... I, I gotta get rid of her. I'm gonna get rid of her. I didn't want to say I told you so, Your Honor. But I warned you. I told you a long time ago not to get mixed up with that kind of a woman. I don't like your tone, Bumper. What do you mean, that kind of a woman? Oh, I don't mean to say anything against the girl, Your Honor, but you can tell she's not the right sort or you wouldn't be in this condition. Oh, wouldn't I? Well, let me tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about somebody you don't know. You're casting reflections on the sweetest, loveliest creature God ever made. Well, you, you, you're a cad, Bumper, that's what you are, you're a cad. Well, if you knew what that girl stood for before she left me, if you knew what she went through, if I was her and she came to me and told me what I had... There, what are you doing with my picture? Where did you get my picture? You gave it to me. Bumper, you lie. No, honest, you gave it well, to me. I'd never give away my precious picture. It's the only thing I've got left of her. I defend it with my last breath. You understand that? You can have anything you want. You can have the chandeliers, you can have the, the fridge, grip ice box, you can have the beds, but you gotta leave me my picture. Oh, isn't she lovely, Bumper? Look, isn't she beautiful? Look. Look, look, look at that hair. Look at those beautiful eyes and those gorgeous teeth. Now, do you see why I can't live without her? You're right, Your Honor. I was wrong. 
Wrong? Who is wrong? I'm wrong in saying anything against your girl. She's wonderful. She's good. Oh, good, eh? So that's what you call good. Well, that may be your idea of good, but it isn't my idea of good. Your Honor. Do you think that a girl that was your good Honor, would... Yes. Would you like to see her again? No, I wouldn't. If she came into this room right now, I'd say... Your Honor, wouldn't you like to see her again? Yeah, I would. But just to tell her what I think of her, just to say to her that she couldn't... I, that... I know where she lives. Just about a half an hour from here. Well, who, who, who lives? Angel. I mean, that girl there. Well, you, you're not kidding me, Bumper. No, I'm not. You know where? Yes, I know, and I'll take you to her. Listen, I, I, I'm a little bit stewed, I know, but I, I'm all right. I mean, don't, honest, don't, don't kid me. I, I've been through, you don't know. I, I was gonna shoot myself. You really know where? Yes, I know. Well, come on. What are you sitting there for? We gotta hurry. Come on. I'm sorry I was impatient, Bumper. But listen, if this turns out right, I'll, I'll buy you anything you can have. I don't want anything, Your Honor. Let's go. Come on. This is where she lives, Your Honor, and, and if you'll excuse me, I won't go up with you. Well, why not, Bumper? I'm nervous. Well, I know, but it's best for you two to be alone. And if you don't mind, I'll just mosey along. Well, perhaps you're right. Where is she? Second floor front. This is for Angel. Second front Angel. Thanks, Bumper. You were going away without seeing me. I saw you walking away. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I've been sitting here thinking about tomorrow, Coney Island, and everything. Oh, Bumper, never leave me again. Promise me you'll never leave me again. I'll go see who it is. I won't let you go, because that's the way I lost you the last time. Whoever it is, I'll send him away so that we can be together again. It's Johnny. 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 Everything's all right, dear. Everything's all right. Oh, Johnny, don't leave me. Don't go away. I'm so afraid. I'll never leave you, dear. Who brought me here? Did you bring me here, Johnny? No, dear, but I'm going to take you away. Yes, please do. What an awful place. Who's that man, Johnny? He's all right, dear. But he's staring at me. Who is he who has it staring at me? Please, Johnny, I can go away. He's frightening me. Yes, dear, I will, but you must come.
Bumper, I, 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 I understand, Your Honor. Good night. Good night. Thank you. See you tomorrow at the casino, same time. Sure. Don't be late. No, I won't. Johnny, may I have a drink of water? 